we went over to day two of Law of Signs. Our objective for today is we're going to use Law of Signs to solve a word problem. Uh, so it's the same techniques as um, day one. We're going to use Law of Signs, A over sine of A equals B over sine of B equals C over sine of C. Notice we're only using sine every single time. No cosines or tangents happening in this section. Um, but in the last section, we were trying to find all the missing pieces. Um, with word problems, sometimes they're more direct. So they might just ask for one thing or another thing. So we'll take a look and see what's going on. Um, map shows the path the pilot flew between Omaha and Chicago in order to avoid a thunderstorm. How much longer is this route than the direct route to Chicago? So here's Omaha, here's Chicago, there's the storm. The pilot could fly straight through the storm, but he decided I'd rather go this way, south of the storm, and then turn here. So the plane actually is flying here and then turning there, getting to Chicago. But as we can see, the direct route 471 going this way is going to be longer. So we need to determine how much longer this route is. So if I create a strategy here, I want to find out the length of this piece. We're going to call it X to give it a name. And the length of this piece, Y. If I find out the length of both of these pieces, then the sum of those two pieces represents how far the pilot actually flew. It says, how much longer is that route? So we simply take the sum of these two numbers, whatever that is, subtract from 470, subtract 471 from it. That'll be the actual distance of the route. And looking at this, we can see that we have to find these two sides. And from yesterday's instruction, uh, you should notice that in order to use the law of sides to find the sides, we have to know all three angles. So in this case, I do have to actually find all the pieces of the triangle. But again, they're only asking me for that one piece of information. That's the final answer I'm looking for. So, um, I can see here this is an angle-angle-side scenario. Again, just like yesterday, I'd like you to establish with the given information what you know, really to reinforce in your brain. I'm using law of signs because it's an angle-angle-side setup. Um, I need to know the angle at Omaha. So let's just do this. I'm going to call it angle O to give it a name. So the measure of angle O plus 113 plus 22 should equal 180 degrees because again we have a triangle, 180 degrees in a triangle. 113 and 22 makes 135 so when I move it over it becomes minus 135 and if I subtract the measure of angle O becomes uh, 45 degrees. I need to know what X and Y both are, so um, once again, I'm going to have side over sine of angle, side over sine of angle, side over sine of angle. doesn't matter what order you put them in. I'm going to put these pieces here in the middle fraction, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to put X first, so I'm going to put X over the sine of 22 equals 471 over the sine of 113 equals y over the sine of 45. Okay. Side over sine of opposite angle, side over sine of opposite angle, side over sine of opposite angle. So again, sides on top, sines of opposite angles on the bottom. This side's opposite that angle, side opposite angle, side opposite angle. Uh, once again, my calculator can evaluate all those sine values for me. I'm going to make it a little bigger so it's easier to see. Some difficulty from yesterday's. If I type in sine 22 and sine 113 and sine 45, obviously on this screen I can see all three at the same time. On Google you might have to record information as you get it. Sine of 22 is 0 0.3746. Sine of 113 is 0 0.9205. And sine of 45 is 0 0.7071. If I use this side of the proportion, that'll allow me to find x. x times 0 0.9205 equals 471 times 0.3746. There's our products that we're going to do. So 0.9205x equals 471 times 0.3746. So that's 176.4366. Divide both sides by 0.9205, and we get a distance of 191 point, let's go 7, 191.7 miles. 
everything yesterday was around the nearest tent, so let's just go ahead and assume that's what they want on this too. So this portion of the trip right here is 191.7 miles. Our job is still to find the other distance from the turning point to Chicago, and that's going to be found by using this proportion. So it's going to be 0 0.9205 times y, and then equals 471 times 0 0.7071. Four seventy one times point seven zero seven one. So that's three thirty three point oh four four one. So to get y, I'm simply going to take three thirty three point oh four four one divided by point nine two oh five, and that gets us a distance of three hundred sixty one point eight miles. So now we know exactly how far the pilot flew both legs. So this piece is going to be 191.7 miles, and this piece is 361.8 miles. So the total distance he traveled going the route he took is just the sum of those two numbers. So uh, 361.8 plus 191.7, that's a 5 carry the 1. 3, 5, carry the 1. He went 535 or 553.5 miles as opposed to 471. So the, how much longer is this route? So we subtract 471. 5, bring the decimal down. 3 minus 1 is 2. We borrow. 15 minus 7 is 8. 4 minus 4 is 0. He went an extra 82.5 miles. And you think if a plane's flying 800 miles an hour, an extra 10 minutes or so to avoid the storm, that might have been a good deal. 